We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we gather to celebrate a marvelous beginning in the lives and in the love of these two people. And you, as their dear friends and family, are in a unique position to offer very special and sincere prayers for bridegroom and bride, and for the future upon which they're about to embark. So please now for a moment bow your heads and offer those prayers on their behalf. Father in heaven, hear these are prayers for Sebastian Arthur and Eliana, who today are united in marriage before your presence. Give them your blessing and strengthen their love for each other. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And now we will listen to the Word of God readings from Scripture chosen by Sebastian and Ileana for their celebration. And the first of these will be proclaimed from the Old Testament by Micah. A reading from the book of Ruth. Ruth said, for whatever you, you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Only death will be able to separate me from you. The, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excellent. Well done. Well done. <laughs> that I may work for your holy gospel. Please rise to greet the gospel. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, At the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and the two shall become as one. They are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, let no man separate what God has joined. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. You know, just after the processional, I mentioned we were celebrating something brand new in the lives and in the love of these two people. And I'm sure that if each of us thought about it, we'd have to agree that we would hope that we're not celebrating the very beginning of a love relationship. Because any two people who come before the church and the person of the church's minister and their dear friends and family gathered together representing the people of God and publicly proclaim that they'll love one another for the rest of their lives, <laughs> well, I'm sure we would all hope that these two people already have been in love for some time now. However, there is something brand new which will occur in their lives and in their love, something that's never existed there before this evening, nor will it exist until a few short moments from now when they exchange their vows. You know, we people who live in this age and in this society, I think we consider ourselves to be rather sophisticated, very practical people. And sometimes I think we feel that if we were to experience a culture that used rich signs and symbols and rites of passage to express the important changes in life, maybe we feel like we'd need to go to a publication like National Geographic magazine and thumb through the pages to find a very primitive and remote culture. But all we need to do to realize how deeply we rely on sign and symbol and right to express realities a million words couldn't even come close to expressing. All we need to do is come to a beautiful <coughs> wedding ceremony like this one, which is full of those signs and symbols and rites. 
In fact, even in our most practical moments, we use signs. And I could think of one we came up against on this celebration uh, journey. You know, uh, it usually is red, has eight sides. Most of the time it sits on top of a white post and has the white letters S-T-O-P appearing across the face of the sign. And I'd be willing to further wager that when we encountered that sign, we didn't just say what a quaint little decoration and then just keep on going. And that's because we know that a sign is something that, first of all, is meant to be perceived by our senses. But once it is, it's processed through our minds, and it leads us to realities other than the sign itself, other than the paint and the metal and the letters and the wood. So when we encountered that sign, several meanings came across our mind at once, like danger, slow down, cross traffic ahead, stop. That sign even affected the way we behaved, and it may wear very well have even saved our lives. Well, as I said, in this beautiful ceremony, there are also signs that lead us to other realities. But of course, the ones everybody wants to see are the rings. They're bright, they're shining, they're enduring, they're made of precious metal, and they're designed to last. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, should I keep going? <laughs> and during all of those years, those rings are designed to remain bright, shining, and enduring, in a sense, changeless. But I've got bad news. For the other part of the sign, the hands that will wear the rings will not remain changeless. At first, they're pretty much going to look the way that they do now, but as you begin to build a life together, and I'm not sure how handy Arthur is, but you know, a misguided hammer, topple off a bicycle, scars and lines will appear on those hands and they won't go away. Then a funny thing happens as days become weeks, weeks, months, months, years, years, decades, lines and wrinkles will spontaneously appear on the hand so that one day a whole ocean of lotion won't take them away anymore. <laughs> Until what may very well happen one day is that there will appear the dreaded age spot. You know that some of us call large freckles? So that 5, 10, 20, 30 years from today, these hands will look very different than they do today. But the rings will remain bright and shining and enduring through it all. Now, I've gotten about three looks from Ileana that say, how about some good news about the hands for a change? <laughs> and the fact that the hands change is good news because they represent you two people and nobody expects you to remain exactly the same as you are today. In fact, today, you promise to marry the series of persons that each of you is going to become as you continue to grow and develop and mature as individuals. For example, I'm not sure how it is at this instant in their relationship, but of course, I presume that Sebastian is the strong one. And Ileana relies for him, on him for help through difficult... All right, so I got it wrong. It doesn't really matter who the strong one is because one day the strong one will wake up and realize that he or she needs the help of the other person through difficulties. And there will be difficulties, but great joy, tremendous accomplishments until one day you're going to look back and see that almost all of your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations have come true. But on that day, years from now, just like these hands, you will be very different people than you are today. But your love, like the ring, will remain bright and shining and enduring through it all. In fact, even better than the ring, your love will be more beautiful in those days even than it is today. So when I said that you were celebrating something new, it isn't just that you'll be wearing wedding rings. But just as the ring is the sign that leads us to the reality of your faithful love for one another, today God takes your faithful love and changes it into a sign of something other than itself. You see, in the Hebrew Scriptures, the most eloquent description of God's love is when he's portrayed as a bridegroom and his people the bride. And Jesus also is referred to as the bridegroom and the church is bride, which means the love that God has for his people that Christ has for his church is more than a daddy's love. It's more than a brother's love. It's a lover's love, a committed love, a passionate love, a love that's there through thick and thin no matter what. In fact, today your love becomes so similar in style to the love that God has for his people that it becomes a perfect sign leading us to the reality of God's love. And not only that, today God's love will abide in your love for your benefit and the benefit of all these wonderful people who know you and who love you 
and who are influenced by you. So let's conclude then. You know, when you go to a happily married couple's home, like maybe for dinner sometime, you get it? <laughs> you get the feeling that besides bride and groom, someone else is living in that home. You get the feeling that God resides there. And because of the sacrament we celebrate with you now, in your case, it will not be just a feeling, it will be a reality. <laughs> My dear friends, you've come together in this beautiful place so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister in this community assembled here. Christ abundantly blesses this love. He already has consecrated you in baptism, and now he enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so, in the presence of the church here assembled, I ask you to state your intentions. Sebastian, Arthur, and Ileana, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes. Yes. Would you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Yes. Yes. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. And you're going to repeat after me for Sebastian. <clears throat> I, Sebastian, take you, Ileana. I, Sebastian, take you, Ileana. For my lawful wife. For my lawful wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or poorer. <laughs> in sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. Okay. I, Ileana, take you, Sebastian. I, Ileana, take you, Sebastian. For my lawful husband. For my lawful husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness <coughs> and in health. In sickness and in health. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessings. What God has joined, men must not divide. Amen. Amen. I heard that one. <laughs> May the Lord God bless these rings which you give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. And you're going to give And as you place it, you're going to repeat after me. And look at her. <laughs> Ileana, take this ring. <coughs> Ileana, take this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Very good. Whew, must be the right girl. And as you place it, you will repeat after me. Sebastian, take this ring. Sebastian, take this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. That was easy. <coughs> My dear friends, let us ask God for his continued blessing <coughs> upon this bridegroom and his bride. <coughs> oh.
Holy Father, creator of the universe, maker of man and woman in your own likeness, source of blessing for married life. We humbly pray to you for this woman who today is united with her husband in the sacrament of marriage. May your fullest blessing come upon her and her husband so that they may together rejoice in your gift of married love and enrich your church with their family. Lord, may they both praise you when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrows. May they be glad that you help them in their work and know that you are with them in their need. May they pray to you in the community of the church and be your witnesses in the world. And may they reach old age in the company of their friends and come at last to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Very good. And now let us rise and together pray to our Father in the words our Savior and brother gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now it is my great honor to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Sebastian Arthur Sobchak. And on occasions such as these, it's appropriate for us to show our approval with our applause. You may kiss the bride. And now the celebration continues. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>